What's up guys, this is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today we're gonna to talk about altitudes, the different altitudes that can get confusing, the pressure altitudes, density altitudes, uh, true altitudes, indicated altitudes, all those. We're gonna explain those, and then we're gonna get into uh, how the altimeter works um, and what that means in terms of those altitudes. So let's get started. So here we have a couple aircraft. Um, we have a mountain, and then we have some hills. We have the ground and we have the sea, right? So this is gonna represent our sea level. Okay, so the first altitude I wanna talk about is called what we call altitude, absolute altitude. And that's the same thing as saying above ground or AGL. So above ground or absolute altitude is gonna be, for this aircraft, it's gonna be this distance here. For this aircraft, it'll be this distance here. And then if we had another aircraft, because I'm a bad artist, it would be this altitude here. Okay, so these are our absolute altitudes. And the next altitude we wanna talk about is true altitude. True altitude is gonna be your altitude in terms of sea level, okay? So for this aircraft, it's here, true. For this aircraft, it'll be the same because it's measured again to the sea level line. And then this one, again, all the way down to sea level, that's going to be our true altitude. Okay. So this is in reference to mean sea level. So this is what we're going to use to compare on all our charts because all the charts are in terms of mean sea level, MSL, okay? So it's gonna have this terrain, let's say this terrain is 500 feet MSL, right? So we know from our chart that this hill is 500 feet MSL. We want to have true altitude if we could. Um, and so, cause that will tell us how much higher we are above this 500 feet MSL. So let's say our true altitude, let's say we knew it, in our aircraft, and this was 4,000 feet, we know that we're plenty high above the terrain listed on our chart. Okay, the next altitude we wanna talk about, we have, to, we have to look at our altimeter to talk about the next altitude. So we wanna talk about indicated altitude. That is what you indicate on your altimeter. So if this is a blown up altimeter of this aircraft right here, so you go 20, and then you look at the 1,000 foot needle, it's between zero and one, uh, so about 500, and then to get more detail, you look here at the 100 foot needle, which is on the five. So we have 20,500 feet for our indicated. Okay, and now the indicated altitude is going to change depending on what you put in your altimeter setting window, which right now we have input 30.00 inches of mercury. This is what you'll get from ATC and they get weather readings from a station on the ground. They get barometric pressure readings and they say, okay, the pressure, the air pressure has changed uh, from standard to 30.00. We're gonna tell all the pilots uh, to change their altimeter settings to 30.00. What this does is it puts all the pilots off the same reference, okay? So that now they're all using the same reference so that their altimeters can read about the same that way they know which altitude each other is at the next altitude we'll talk about is pressure altitude pressure altitude is not used while you're in the aircraft you can find it when you're in the aircraft by simply setting your altimeter to the standard barometric pressure of 29.92 if you were to leave your altimeter setting at 29.92 the whole time you would fly around at a pressure altitude, you're never gonna use that in flight. What we do use this in is for calculations, right? So when we're performing calculations, climb performance or cruise performance, we'll always start with that pressure altitude. And then what those charts do is they convert it to a density altitude by correcting for non-standard temperature. So we'll get to that in a sec, but basically pressure altitude is like a reference altitude. So that's what you'll start with when you do your calculations. Okay, the next altitude we're gonna talk about and the last altitude we're gonna talk about is 
density altitude, and I like to call it destiny altitude, not only because it kind of is spelt like that, right? You just rearrange a few letters, uh, but also because it's like your destiny. If you don't compute a density altitude, uh, your aircraft performance is going to suffer from it. And if you don't know that, uh, your destiny is gonna be uh, bad. So uh, you know, control your destiny, know your density altitude. Okay, so again, I mentioned density altitude is all about performance. We don't have a gauge for density altitude, okay? All we have is indicated altitude. Uh, you know, maybe on a glass cockpit, you have a nice uh, glass cockpit that tells you the density altitude, um, but on standard six packs, you do not. Uh, but the reason we care about it, again, is for performance, aircraft performance. So when you're calculating your client performance, your cruise performance, all that stuff, Again, we start with the pressure altitude, the, that reference altitude, that's our starting point. And then what you do on those charts, the first thing you do is you match a pressure altitude, the charts in the POA, so performance charts, pressure altitude with a temperature. What you're doing there is you're correcting for non-standard temperatures because temperature is the number one reason density altitude changes. Let's talk about that. So density altitude is just a measure of the density of the air. Now the density of the air changes as we go up in altitude. It gets less dense the higher we get, okay? And it's more dense the lower we get. Other things change the density of the air, like temperature. The hotter you get, the less dense the air. So that's gonna have an effect on your density altitude. And then another thing is humidity. Humidity, there's more water molecules uh, taking up the space of the air molecules. So the amount of air is less, so that air density is less. So hum high humidity also makes the density less. So when the density is less, again, we associate less density with higher altitudes. So when the density is less, the density altitude goes up, okay? So density down density altitude up and vice versa, okay? And when density altitude goes up, our aircraft performance is affected negatively. The flow of air over the wings does not create as much lift because there's less air molecules. Uh, the propeller is cutting through less air molecules, so it has less thrust output. And then even the combustion of uh, your engine is gonna provide less power because there's less air to burn with your fuel. So in every way, uh, density altitude negatively af per, uh, affects aircraft performance. So that is why we care about density altitude. It's pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature, and it's a measure of density in the air. Okay, so now let's talk about how temperature can also affect the reading on our altimeters. So we have two aircraft, they are set to the same altimeter setting and they're reading both 20,500 feet, okay? So let's say we're, both aircraft are currently in a cold air mass, okay? So let's say it's, uh, I don't know, 10 degrees Celsius, okay, in this air mass. Uh, they're both in the same temperature. Uh, so they're both going to have the same readings. Nothing, nothing's new here. But then let's say that this aircraft flies into a pocket of warm air where the temperature goes up to 15 degrees Celsius. What is that going to do to his altimeter? What's going to happen is his altimeter is actually going to read less. What it's gonna do is it's actually going to read a small, a lower altitude. So this now reads 18,400 feet. And the reason this happens is because pressure goes with temperature when we're talking about altimeter readings. So the temperature went up. So pressure goes with temperature. So that means the pressure went up. Now, all our altimeters do is they just read the pressure, okay? So it's reading that the pressure went up 
and it associates a higher pressure with a lower altitude. Okay, so now this is reading a couple thousand feet less than this one. They still have the same altimeter setting. They're still at the same true altitude compared to sea level, but this one reads much less. And this is where the phrase um, from high to low, look out below. Because if you're flying in high temperature, okay, and then you get here to low temperature. So now we have the opposite of what I just said. So temperature has now gone down from here to here. So that means the pressure goes down because when we're talking about altimeters, temperature goes with pressure, right? And this is true uh, in everything uh, according to the ideal gas law, but that, whatever, we don't need to talk about that. And so when pressure goes down, our, our altimeter says, oh, we must be higher because I'm reading lower pressure. So the altimeter actually goes up, okay? So this one's gonna have, read a higher altitude. Let's say it reads now, you know, 19,200, okay? Now, if we were flying over here by these mountains, you're gonna think you're at 19,200 and you have plenty distance above this terrain, but when really you're, at, you're actually at a much lower altitude, something like 18,400. Okay, so that's where it goes high to low, look out below. We went from high temperature or a high pressure, same thing for pressure, right? Because temperature goes with pressure. So when we go from a high temperature of pressure to a low temperature of pressure, high to low, your altimeter is gonna read something higher. Okay, so you're gonna think you're higher. So look out below because you're, you think you're higher, you, you think you're gonna have more clearance than you actually do. So high to low, look out below.